This episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by Stitch Fix and by Bespoke Post. Crime is bad. Most of the time. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, not very often, but sometimes, crime is cool. If you've watched our show for a long time, you probably share our appreciation for cool crimes and enjoy evaluating whether or not a crime's coolness reaches the threshold to truly be considered a cool crime. Mm -hmm. So to kick this episode off, we've got a couple of recent crimes that we feel very much qualify for designation as cool crimes. One cool crime that people often take for granted nowadays is street art, mainly because it's often not actually illegal. Years ago, most street art was technically vandalism in the eyes of the law, but these days, it's often just mural art that was commissioned with the full cooperation of whoever owns the walls that the art is going on to. And that was the case with a recent mural that went up in Peoria, Illinois. Local artist Joshua Hawkins spoke to Gizmodo's io9 about how this very normal gig went down. Hawkins said that about a year ago, he'd met a guy at an art show who called himself Nate. The email address he provided to Hawkins included the name Nate Compte, which happens to be the name of the man who owns the building. Then about two weeks ago, around Thanksgiving, Nate reached out to Hawkins and asked him to paint a mural on his building. It wasn't his usual style, but Hawkins thought it'd be a fun project. Besides, he liked the idea of having more public art in Peoria, a growing city of over 100,000 people, about two and a half hours southwest of Chicago. Quote, we've got a few murals in Peoria, but I didn't mind painting it because, you know, I like weird stuff. And I wouldn't mind Peoria having a bit more of a weird art scene, Hawkins told io9. The design, which Nate told Hawkins was created by his own graphic artist, depicted Sesame Street's Cookie Monster as a Bolshevist icon. Uh, it played on classic art from the Russian Revolution saying, Peace, Land, Cookies, which looks to be a play on the 1917 October Revolution battle cry, Peace, Land, Bread. The artist and three helpers who he'd hired spent a long weekend painting it as Nate wanted it done quickly. It was one of the stranger things Hawkins had been asked to create, but said he was paid above his normal rate for the work in cash and all the paint was provided to make it happen, though he wouldn't share how much he was compensated. And yeah, here's the mural. And yes, that's Cookie Monster from Sesame Street, painted in the style of Soviet propaganda, holding up a cookie that has a rainbow shooting out of it with peace, land, cookies written in Russian at the bottom. It's a little bit odd, but it's still pretty much your typical quirky street art mural that you'd find in any major city. Mm -hmm. uh, but then things got weirder. Uh, here's what Joshua Hawkins posted to Facebook about a week after finishing the painting. Something insane is going on with this mural. The mural that we painted has been completely painted over by the building owner. Evidently, the guy that hired me to paint the mural was not really the owner of the building. It was definitely a weird situation from the beginning, and we should have asked more questions. The real owner contacted me asking why the hell I painted this crazy shit on his building. I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. This is insane. One of the best paying commissions I've ever had has turned into the weirdest fuckery I've ever dealt with. I do apologize to the owner of the building, and, and while this was stressful and confusing, the fact remains that we were paid by someone. So yeah, a bit weird. Um, the real Nate Compte, who actually owns the building, he was pissed off about this big weird mural suddenly showing up on his building without his knowledge or permission, which is understandable. Mm -hmm. uh, some other guy, not Nate, a fake Nate, had impersonated him for an entire year while this mural was being planned. Fake Nate paid what sounds like good money for the mural to be painted, and fake Nate had now vanished and was unreachable. It's Banksy. <laughs> I mean... Could be. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, the mural, which locals seem to have mostly liked, it was painted over in white. Uh, the real Nate Compte told a local newspaper, quote, it wasn't a mural. It was graffiti. Now I'm the evil Grinch and getting hate mail. No cookies for Na Nate Compte. No. Uh, and the real Nate hasn't just been getting hate mail and been called the evil Grinch. More recently, since the story has spread across the country, someone tagged the white rectangle where the mural used to be with the message, fuck real Nate. <laughs> 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 I missed the fake Nate. Yeah, and there was a makeshift memorial on the sidewalk featuring a bunch of cookies scattered on the ground and a poster featuring Cookie Monster and the message, C is for cover-up. And uh, yeah, as we often say, bullying, it works. Because after so much backlash, Real Nate has now started up a Facebook page called Graffiti Replacement Mural where he's taking proposals for a new mural. Mural McMural face. <laughs> uh, Real Nate told Artnet, before the newest graffiti, I had already decided to demonstrate my goodwill to the art community. I believe that is the wisest thing I can do right now. I will choose a more appropriate image for Peoria from those proposals, and I will hire a local artist to paint it. Um, but, you know, so far, no surprise. Most of the comments on that Facebook page are just saying to bring back the original Cookie Monster mural that uh, started all this. This is the real Sesame Street. Yeah. Get him back. But I, like, 
this, this raises questions about, you know, art theory. It's like, you know, this Joshua guy painted it. But the real artist, some might argue, would be fake Nate. Yeah. Because that's some that's art in itself is um, tricking people into vandalism on your behalf. Also, the white rectangle, which currently resides there, is in and of itself art because it's receiving nationwide acclaim and attention because yeah. of what it covered up. Yeah. I just, uh, I, I don't know if we're ever going to get to the bottom of this, but this is way more interesting than any of this fucking monolith shit that keeps happening. I actually love uh, ghost owners now. Like, you get, you ghost own a property, yeah. you, you tell some people to do something to the property, and then you just vanish. Yeah. And the property's, the, everyone's confused what the hell's going on. I actually like this. Yeah. You, I think that more people should commission art in re- places they don't own. You you hand over money, you give people some honest work, but yeah. under completely false pretenses. Yeah, and they're not worried because they think that it's completely on the level, so they're not worried about cops showing up or anything. Yeah. You you cause a scene, you cause a ruckus. And, and then, that's the real earth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is art. You're welcome, world. And like, yeah, they're going to replace it with a new mural, but it's like... Then you, it's not the same. That's technically still creating multiple jobs because someone had to paint over it with the white rectangle. Then now you get another artist who's going to get paid because yeah. the community loved it so much they got to get a new one. But yeah, there's a lot of it's a lot of questions here. Like, why did a year ago some unknown person decide to impersonate this Nate guy? It was a, was it a and, it was a perfect wall. <laughs> it's a perfect wall. I wish I owned that wall. It's someone with a lot of money that likes classy pranks. Yeah. Yeah. I, these are the pranks I can get behind. Yeah, this is a cool, a cool, a crime, cool crime and a cool prank. Yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah. Moving, moving on. on to our next cool crime. Uh, so recently, residents of the small New Jersey town of Malika Township have been reporting extremely loud noises described by local residents as sounding like bombs on a weekly basis. The explosive noises have prompted calls to 911 and police. And based on lo- the locations of the callers, The sound is loud enough to be heard within a 10-mile area, so pretty loud. And it's been happening for months. Uh, There's a National Guard base fairly close by, so I don't know, maybe they're testing munitions or the military planes are creating sonic booms or something over there, except no. Investigators uh, do not believe that's what's happening. So what the hell is happening here? Well, living with the sound of bombs going off randomly on a semi-weekly basis doesn't sound very fun. Uh, It sounds like a crime, but is it a cool crime? Well, uh, we now know what caused these extremely loud booms. And thankfully, it wasn't bombs going off. It was Rob Butkowski of the neighboring town of Hamilton and his homemade DIY hail cannon. Yeah, that's Rob you see right there. And that's his big ass steampunk looking hail cannon that he's been scaring the absolute shit out of uh, everyone with uh, within a a five mile radius. Uh, Here's from the New York Post. Rob Bukowski of Hamilton said he's been firing off the sonically loud cone-shaped contraption, which blasts shockwaves up to the sky, to break up cloud formations and scare away birds that nibble his grapes. (laughs) What an overreaction. (laughs) Quote, it sounds like a jet going by, said Bukowski 34. It's like the loudest thing you've ever heard just blew through your chest. It's amazing. (laughs) Imagine going out and being like, these damn birds keep eating my grapes. I'm going to create something that ruins the town. Yeah. It continues, Bukowski, who works in construction, said he made the 16-foot-long machine from scratch using scrap metal from street signs and other objects because he was, quote, bored from all this COVID shit. (laughs) Using directions he found online, he rigged a mixture of acetylene and oxygen in a propane tank to create an explosion that blasts from the barrel to keep icy weather at bay. For weeks, he's been firing off the thunderous shock waves, which travel 30,000 feet in a 1.5-mile radius above his five-acre plot, he said. Quote, you can see the split clouds apart. He said, you can hear it rip. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's me. It's pretty cool, right? (laughs) What the hell's going on? Oh, that's just old man Bukowski and his weather machine. He's 34. Not old. He's old to some. To the Gen Zers out there. Slaps hail cannon. This baby can rip a hole in a cloud. 30,000 feet up. Don't be doing board slides on the front of this property. He'll point this thing at you, the local children who like to skateboard. I mean, I do want to know what would happen if you fired it, like... It would shatter your organs. <laughs> it would just blast your organs. Yeah, it would probably liquefy you in some way. This man's blasting war crimes into the sky. Yeah. The funniest thing, like, looking into this, though, is, like, this hail cannon thing, it's been around for, like, 100-something years. Mm-hmm. Um, there's zero proof that it actually fucking works, though. He seems but to it believe. Sounds pretty cool. Like, yeah, you shoot it up there, the clouds just go. Bah! It's yeah. fucking amazing, right? Why are people complaining or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> you heard it from how far? 
Sweet. That's fucking tight. So yeah, that does seem pretty cool, even if it is uh, clearly a nuisance to anyone who lives even remotely close by. But is it a cool crime? Well, no, actually, because it's not actually a crime. The local police chief told the New York Post, quote, it doesn't fire projectiles and it's not a firearm or an explosive. It uses gas and that's it. Oh, Nothing no. we can do. <laughs> My hands are tied. Yeah. Uh, and because Rob Bukowski uh, only fires it off during the day, it isn't a noise violation either. So he's just going to keep on doing it uh, because, as he says, I'm going to do whatever I want as long as it's legal. I thought this was America. Uh, it, he's proving that it is America. You're telling me that my hail cannon, which, by the way, is cool as shit. And I built myself. And I built it myself. Mm -hmm. You're telling me you don't like it? Well, too bad. Well. The cannon just got <laughs> twice as loud. Why don't you move over to France? Yeah. You hate it so much. I mean, that's where it was invented. It's so a, there you the, go. The wine growing uh, region of France. Uh huh. So, yeah, as of right now, not a cool crime because it's not a crime. Yeah. And I guess your definition of cool, it really depends on how you feel about extremely loud noises. <laughs> yeah. Probably cool to experience once or twice. If you're not in control. Live next to them. It's, it's the same with like fireworks. Like yeah. setting off fireworks, extremely fun. Living in a neighborhood where other people are setting off fireworks, constantly, less fun. Yeah. Uh, as one local resident told the news, quote, every time it goes off, I think there's been an accident. It scares the poop out of us. <laughs> Literally, I keep shitting my pants every time it goes off. I mean, it's and you never know when it's going to go off because, like, I mean, during the day, sure. But it's kind of just whenever Rob decides he wants to shoot it off. I mean, it's he doesn't just look, man, it's not up to me. It's up to the clouds. If I see a hail cloud coming in. I'm going to shoot it off. You should be thanking me. Some days, no hail clouds, so no booms. I expect many gift baskets yeah. this Christmas season. Yeah, I've killed a lot of birds. and uh, They had it coming. They had it coming. They were eating my grapes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyways, moving on to our next story, which is about crime, but about one of the least cool possible crimes, mm -hmm. which is serial murder. You've probably heard of the Zodiac Killer, uh, either because of the David Fincher movie Zodiac or uh, all those jokes about Ted Cruz being the Zodiac Killer from a few years ago, which got really lame really quick. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, the Zodiac Killer was a real serial, serial killer who murdered anywhere between five and several dozen people in the 60s and 70s and has never been caught. Uh, the Zodiac Killer is basically the crown jewel of unsolved mysteries, uh, but now with half a century since the murders took place, it's less and less likely that we'll ever know the truth. But... Recently, a big piece of the puzzle that has stumped investigators for 50 years was finally solved by a YouTuber of all people. We can do anything. Yeah. Well, actually, it was solved by some guys who have been collaborating on it and also happen to have been documenting their progress on YouTube. But it's way funnier to just say YouTubers because that catch-all, it sucks. Sam Pepper has dec <laughs> decrypted the Zodiac cipher. Yeah, there. He finally, it, he's back and he decrypted the Zodiac. What's up, everybody? You all <laughs> laughed at me. <laughs> Who's laughing now? Uh, anyways, what did these YouTubers figure out? Well, during the Zodiac murders, the killers sent a bunch of letters to the media, which also contained coded messages known as ciphers, which at first glance just looked like a bunch of random symbols. Yeah, so one of these ciphers was solved in 1969 by a couple of school teachers, and it apparently wasn't very complex. Also, the solution is full of weird typos and grammatical errors, and just some straight-up gibberish as well. Uh, here it is. I like killing people because it is so much fun. It is more fun than killing wild game in the forest because man is the most dangerous animal of all. To kill something gives me the most thrilling experience. It is even better than getting your rocks off with a girl. The best part of it is that when I die, I will be reborn in paradise and the I have killed will become my slaves. I will not give you my name because you will try to slow down or stop my collection of slaves for my afterlife. And then just a bunch of gibberish because... The Zodiac wasn't very good at making codes. No, not really all that help for, helpful for solving the murders as uh, people had hoped, uh, but still very creepy. Yeah. Very creepy. Not fun. Uh, meanwhile, the Zodiac Killer's other ciphers have remained unsolved, and many have wondered if solving them would yield more helpful information about the killer's identity. Well, those YouTubers uh, that we mentioned solved one of those ciphers. Mm -hmm. And credit where it's due, the YouTubers are American software engineer David Orenchak, Australian mathematician Sam Blake, and Belgian computer programmer Jarl van Eyck. Uh, I would have assumed that they were gamers, but they could be, but they're code, also... Code breaking's the... Once you get into code breaking video games, it's like... Small potatoes. Small potatoes. Uh, the process they use to solve what's known as the 340 cipher is way too complicated for us to even attempt to explain. And you should really just go watch their video. It's linked below. But the question on everyone's mind is, of course, 
what did it say? So here you go. Uh, 40, 50 years in the making. Here's what it said. All right. <clears throat> Mr. Police, you could have saved her. I gave you all the clues. <laughs> oh. and a little snowman. Uh, wait, so that, that's not it. That's, that's from the 2017 crime thriller movie, The Snowman. Mm. Now, here's the real thing. I hope you are having lots of fun in trying to catch me. That wasn't me on the TV show, which brings up a point about me. I am not afraid of the gas chamber because it will send me to paradise all the sooner because I now have enough slaves to work for me where everyone else has nothing when they reach paradise. So they are afraid of death. I am not afraid because I know that my new life is life will be an easy one in paradise death. Hmm. Okay, so uh, once again, a bunch of scary fucking nonsense that doesn't reveal anything about the killer's identity. But it's definitely the real solution, which surprised the hell out of me. I saw this going around and I was like... All right, yeah, cool, sure. And then yeah. it was confirmed by news outlets and, uh, and the FBI yeah, and stuff. The FBI and it's just, is like, just like, yeah, it seems legit. So, yeah, uh, the, the, uh, the FBI, they confirmed it. Uh, the part about not being on the TV is a reference to a guy who was apparently an imposter who called into a news program. And the part about not being afraid of the gas chamber is a reference to a question the news anchor asked during that fake interview. The rest is in line with the Zodiac's other letters, which indicate he was obsessed with the idea that everyone he killed would be his slaves in the afterlife. So, it's legit. And and really, you should go watch the video about how they did it, because it's pretty interesting, and uh, we can't explain it. Uh, but you can. You yeah, can it it's, uh, it's like... It, uh, my favorite genre of YouTube videos, ones where I watch and I'm like, I understand about 20% of this, but this is pretty sick. I'm very happy someone else is on the case. <laughs> yeah. Keep telling me and, uh, you know, I'll the, the 20% or so that makes sense to me, I'll be like, hell yeah. But the rest, it's just flashing in front of my eyes and mm -hmm. I don't understand it. But, uh, yeah, they spent a long time working on this yeah. and uh, I don't get it, but good job, guys. Yeah. Anyway, moving over to some news that's... Uh, you know, much more lighthearted than news about serial killers. Uh, it's starting to get pretty cold in a lot of parts of the world. We should get, could use some of that global warming. <laughs> yeah, uh, not cold here, obviously, at all. It's actually quite nice out, mm -hmm. but you understand. And this past week, the internet was delighted to discover that the official website for Traffic Scotland has a live tracker for their highway snow plows, or trunk road gritters, <laughs> as they say in the local parlance. And uh, each of the snow plows or Gritters, has a unique name, all of which are delightful. So uh, here's some that were active last we checked. Gritney Spears. Spready Mercury. Scotland's Bravest Gritter. BFG, the Big Friendly Gritter. The Incredible Ice Bear. Yes, Sir Ice Can Boogie. Gritty Gonzalez. For your ice only. Ready, Spready, Go. Mr. Plow. Sir Gritzalot. Sprinkles. And uh, additionally, there's plenty more that apparently weren't actively uh, gritting the truck roads when we checked with names like Grit Expectations, Gangsta Granny Gritter, Snoky Mongo, and Gritty Gritty Bang Bang. There should just be one called Gritty. Yeah, we, uh, someone needs to tell Scotland about, uh, about Let him grit. drive it. Yeah. Like the Zamboni. We need to, that that'd be the kind of like international uh, cooperation we need right now. These are as, as creative, if not more, than everyone's Wi-Fi names at their houses. Yeah. yeah. Way better. Uh, listen, if, if you're going to plow roads all winter, you might as well have fun with it. Yeah, uh, totally. Gritty McGrit face would be a good one. I don't know if you uh, are taking that, that, suggestions. That Blanky McBlank shit is so played out. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. But it comes up every time. Every time. People who think they're so clever. Mm -hmm. it's like, this fucking joke is five years old at this point. Yeah. Bodie McBoatface was genuinely, I was like, that's funny because it's stupid. Yeah. And then just everything since then, it's just been like, damn it, blah, 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 blah. All right. Yeah. It's not funny after the fucking 10th time. Sure. Anyways, before we get to the headlines half of the show, this episode is sponsored by Stitch Fix. Does looking at your current cold weather wardrobe options give you a chill? It's time to ditch that old sweater and upgrade that jacket. A Stitch Fix personal stylist can help you pick new pieces that are timeless. Stitch Fix offers clothing hand-selected by expert stylists for your unique size, style, and budget. Every piece is chosen for your fit and your life, and it's the easy solution to finding what makes you feel and look your best. Try on pieces at home before you buy, keep your favorites, and send back the rest. Stitch Fix has free shipping, easy returns and exchanges, and a prepaid return envelope is included in your box. There is no subscription required. Try Stitch Fix once or set up automatic deliveries. You'll pay just a $20 styling fee for each box, which gets credited towards the pieces that you keep. And and there are no hidden fees ever. Get started today at stitchfix.com slash weird and you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That is stitchfix.com slash weird for 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. Stitchfix.com slash weird. 
And this episode is sponsored by Bespoke Post. The curators at Bespoke Post have done it again this winter with an all-new lineup of essential Box of Awesome collections for guys, guaranteed to upgrade your life. You've heard us talk about some of their boxes that especially appeal to us. There's the barrel aging kit for booze, the cocktail kit, uh, this very fancy looking one hitter kit for, uh, you know, consuming the legal substances that you might enjoy. But uh, kits also range from travel accessories to tools to hygiene products and more. Whether it's showcase pieces to level up your indoor hosting skills or cozy threads for those blustery days, Bespoke Post only sends guys the best stuff every month. No matter what you're into, Box of Awesome has you covered. From style and grooming goods to barware, cooking tools, and outdoor gear, Box of Awesome has collections for every part of your life. I love the knife they sent me and the stogies. Mm -hmm. Right now, they've also got tons of great gift ideas and even guides on choosing the right gift, whether it's for the life of the party, the year-round explorer, the cozy homesteader, etc. And to get started, you take the quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right box of awesome for you. They release new boxes every month across a, a ton of categories. Uh, it's free to sign up and you can skip a month or cancel whenever you want. Each box, uh, they cost only $45, but it has over $70 worth of gear inside. And you can get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code WEIRD at checkout. That is boxofawesome.com. Uh, use the code WEIRD for 20% off your first box. This is great. Uh, my wife was looking for somebody to get her clients. That isn't just a gift card. Yeah. And I was like, use this and use the promo code because this is something fun to open that's useful. And it's... You know, gift cards are great, but it's nice to have something to open and something that you didn't expect. Yeah, it's it's nice to have well, places where you can look and just be like, look, I want to buy a gift. Just tell me what to buy as a gift. Yeah. And there's a website be like, that's literally what we do. Yeah. It's gifts. Like I said, I, they sent me my first box when we started working with them and I got a knife and cigars. I was like, yeah, great. Yeah. This is great. It's not really maybe not something you'd think to like purchase for yourself. Yeah. You're like, just choose for me. Yeah. Give me something nice. Thanks. Surprise me. Uh, anyways, let's get into headlines, starting with Florida man coughed, sneezed, and spit throughout a Best Buy after refusing mask, deputies say. I hate these people. I hate them so much. This guy, yeah, he he lost it. He came came up to the geek squad. And they're like, sir, uh, sir, do you have a mask that you can put on? Uh, you know, there's, there's a pandemic. Can you, we have masks for you if you need one. And, Wait, uh, hold on. That that black and, and, and different color, uh, uh, they, that's Antifa. That's not the geek squad. Yeah. Yeah, they've been under our nose this whole time. Yeah, yeah. He, he lost it. He, he started just like spitting and like just running around the store, knocking things over and like uh, pretending to like cough and sneeze on everything. And, yeah, uh, God. Yeah, just caused a, a fucking scene. Yeah. I saw the... Look, I'm no scientist. Maybe it works. I'm saying it probably doesn't and it pisses me off. Mm -hmm. I was in Target the other day doing my groceries. This lady had this fucking thing. It get, get around the ears and it goes and it holds on the chin and it's a piece of plastic this big and it goes in front of her mouth and it and there's it's completely open and it's clear plastic so you can see her face but it just and all I can imagine is just her just shooting the virus into the air. That's and, not a yeah. That's not a. That's not a word. I saw her. I was so fucking angry. She starts coming down the aisle and I said to my wife, I was like, Hey, lit loud again because I've just been trying to shame these people without getting mm. into fights. Yeah, look like, out! This lady's got a bullshit mask. I said, I said, Hey, watch out! Here comes Darth Vader spreading the virus all through the air. You still look like when Darth Vader takes the helmet off, yeah. it's burnt. It just has that fucking thing there. All right. Yeah. And it's just like, My lady, is done. you're doing more harm than good. And you also look dumber than if you just wore a fucking regular mask. That looks like shit. You yeah. look like an asshole. And it look, I'll be honest, it looks worse. And there's some people out there that could do a lot better by keeping a mask on their face. It's not hard. It's the, the craziest thing about 2020 is all of the people who suddenly decided that the most difficult thing in the world is putting a piece of fucking fabric over your fucking mouth and nose. The worst part is people that put too, more effort in figuring out ways to like get around doing it properly. Yeah. It's uh, so fucking aggravating. Anyways. Armed Mexicans were smuggled in to guard border wall, whistleblowers say. <laughs> yeah. So it turns so, out the people that were working on Trump's wall might have been doing a little smuggling. Yeah, just uh, illegal illegal foreign labor to work on the construction of our wall meant to prevent illegal immigration. Mm -hmm. at, yeah. Yeah, no, like the so this the, the border wall is still being constructed apparently. And uh but it's all it's uh, it's all being done like by contractors which is you know, just layer upon layer of like ways to uh, corrupt the whole thing and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, one of the contractors in uh, Texas 
just hired a bunch of fucking security guards from Mexico and literally paved a dirt road for them to like get to the construction site. Perfect. Uh, to like avoid having to use the main roads and just yeah. We'll leave it's a little insane. hole in the wall for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great. This is so fucking funny. This wall. I I I this wall is going to be the laughing stock of America's attempt to like look b- secure somehow but also at the same time like like dicks forever. Yeah, and there's like I've heard I've read that parts of the wall are already like fucked up and destroyed because Have you seen all the videos of people just scaling it? No yeah. problem. Yeah. Yeah. It's a uh, it's a big waste of money. But hey, a bun- bunch of local contractors are getting rich off of it. So yeah, and then Congrats. like using uh, labor and uh, materials that they're allowed, they get to put more money in their pockets, and they're just like, nah, it's fine. It looks fine, right? Yeah. Like ten years. Yeah, just, that's a wall. It's completely collapsed. Yeah. Ugh. Star Giuliani witness Melissa Carone says in new interview that she refuses to quarantine and was not drunk at Michigan hearing. You think I was drunk? I was not no, drunk. This is how I normally operate. Yeah, the, the quote... Life is hell. The quote is literally, I wasn't drunk. I would swear under oath that I wasn't drunk. I was not drunk. I hardly never drink ever. Mm, she's telling the truth through that. I hardly never drink ever. Can't use my words against me when they're the truth. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She was at the fucking shit that went down in dc on saturday mm. uh absolute shit show down there yeah uh, i love my favorite one was that they used uh, the photos from the uh the march uh that was specifically for more restrictions on gun ownership mm. as as like this is the MAGA crowd and it's like no that's from something like three years ago oh who did that uh, it, was, it was floating around on no. uh, twitter.com well there was a uh, there was a lot of proud boys there um just Oh, uh, showing their butts. Well, yeah, that was they. Yeah, they're like we're we are proud Western male chauvinists. Like we're the straightest fucking dudes you'll ever meet. By the way, we're all wearing kilts. We're free balling. We wrote "fuck Antifa" on our asses, and obviously, like you can't write legibly on your own ass. So yeah, we had to bend over and like write on each other's asses. And like here we go. Let's show them the message. That's right, boys. Fuck Antifa. Pride, Woo! Pride boys. Yeah, I don't know if I can even show. That no, don't. Censoring Please, the yeah, shit out yeah, of it. We, but, um, no, don't show it because we're going to get kicked off the platform. But yeah, other than that, they uh, they just went around like uh, beating the shit out of people. Yeah. And, uh, and, and it's yeah, real sma- Like uh, trying to break car windows because the people inside were wearing masks. So they were like, that's Antifa. They got yeah. their masks on. Very cool. Oh, speaking of uh, Rudy, though, I saw a new, saw a new Rudy uh, super spreader video. Oh. I think it's pretty old. Is like, Rudy? It's this video of him just like. Blowing, see, he's sitting in like in a in a crowd. Yeah, blowing his nose. He like looks at it. He wipes his face. He does all that shit that he did in the other one. Like he's just getting his fucking germs everywhere. And then he he closes it, but he closes it in reverse so that like the booger side is the outside. He like puts it down on his lap, touches it, and then immediately turns to the woman next to him and like grabs her arm. Yeah, it's uh, it's incredible. Yeah, he really is a disgusting human being. Vile, inside and out. He's like, uh, <laughs> someone described him as like the real life Mucinex man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's like one of those little boogers. <laughs> yeah. And now with TJ Miller out of the picture, maybe they need to hire him for the voice. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I'm the Mucinex man. <laughs> I was the former mayor of New York, now I'm the Mucinex man. I mean, it would be an upgrade from his current uh Are you so job? congested that you just blow your nose constantly? You run out of fresh tissue and you just got germs all over yourself. Yeah. Get some Mucinex. Yeah. Pierce Morgan reacts to fans comparing him to the pigeon lady in Home Alone 2. That is not me. And you know what? He's yeah. right because that lady is actually nice. Yeah. But they look, uh, it never yeah. occurred to me, but they, she look, he looks identical to the pigeon lady. Which is funny because, again, she's a nice lady. But she is specifically made up to look horrible in that movie. Yeah. So the fact that he looks like that normally should say something about him. He is a bad person. Yes, he is. I don't like him. No. Walt Disney World will digitally add masks to guests not wearing them in ride photos. They already did it. There's examples of it. It looks so stupid. Well, they've had this technology for a while because of the uh, the famous Flash Mountain. Where yeah. You show your tits going down Splash Mountain. Yeah. So they've had to have this uh, technology. But I think it's, you know, it's. They're doing it to save their asses because, you know, obviously people are going to take their masks off. And then Disney, it looks bad if they have a bunch of pictures going around people with their masks on. Yeah. It's still just, I mean, it shouldn't be open. No. Or if it... Also, why are the, like, who, 
Imagine going on the ride and you're like, can't wait to have that family photo forever with a bunch of masks on. Yeah. Or you look at it and you're like, wait, the person sitting right behind me was just like, ah. Or in front of you or it's just going back into your face. Yeah. yeah. Mm, not great. Water joins gold and oil for first time as traded commodity on Wall Street amid fears of scarcity. Literally Mad Max. Yeah, it's literally like one of the, the Literally things. the end of the world shit. Yeah, it's like, it's one sentence in the like opening title card of a dystopian movie. It's like, yeah. In, in, in 2020, 2020 <laughs> water became so scarce that it began, it began to be traded as a commodity on the New York Stock Exchange, right alongside pork barrels and uh, orange juice. Yeah, not great. Yeah. We're not even going to live around long enough to have cyberpunk become a reality. Nope, we just live in the shitty part of the beginning. <laughs> yeah, this sucks. Yeah, all the all the bad, none of the good. Mm -hmm. Fucking bullshit. Yep. McDonald's opens barbershop, offers 90s-inspired Golden M haircut, which is the, the this haircut that ho hopefully, yeah, it's the one that's like, yeah. a lot of dudes had it. Uh, a lot of a lot of cool dudes on. I had on the TV. Un, the under bowl cut where you, there was a bowl cut and then but it was shaved under so you could hold it up. Yeah, that was a yeah cool one for my when I was a kid. The penis head cut. Yeah, thanks. The circum. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like so. This is a real barber shop where they only in you know, America or no? No, it's in Sweden. Oh, okay. Probably the only country where they are allowed to do this because Sweden yeah. doesn't give a fuck. They're like, whatever you, you, we are all in control of our own lives. I go to McDonald's for their great meatballs. I mean, so. yeah, I, I am curious. What is the Swedish McDonald's? Does it have fermented shark on the menu? Probably. Like, yeah, we kill a shark and then we bury it on the beach for one week. It's and delicious. then we dig it up. It is extremely sour. We love Would it. Would you like barbecue sauce with it? <laughs> Bored? These Americans are teaching their dogs to talk. Yeah, this is a thing that's come up during pandemic times of all these people... I'm so lonely that I need to talk to my animals. Yeah, they, they set up these, like, buttons. Each one does, like, a voice. I've seen some videos of that, yeah. Ah, uh, like, it's bullshit. Yeah. It's, like, the same as, like, when, you know, remember, like, Coco the Gorilla? Like, oh, Coco could talk. But if you actually watch any of the shit of, like, Coco talking, it's just a bunch of gibberish. And then Coco's trainer's like, oh, uh, yeah, so that, what Coco means to say is this. Yeah. So it's, like, all these videos of these fucking dogs are just, like, uh, Water, love, friend. <laughs> and they're like, you oh, see? Uh, he's saying, uh, you know, he wishes he could go to the beach because he loves loves running in the ocean. Dogs can talk. I don't know. Whatever gets people through the, the corner. Yeah, it's something to do. Yeah. If that's keeping them busy but inside, yeah. I'm all for it. Yeah. Do, do whatever the hell you want. I don't Teach care how many to... takes it takes on your phone to get your dog to press the right button. I'm going to believe it when I see yeah. it. Oh, that's cool. Wow, I wow. pressed it right away. Wow, I wonder what else you could teach that dog yeah. in, in your apartment. It's like it's like, uh, the, the, like the dude perfect videos where you don't see the 7,000 attempts <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> before. It's just like, well, the dog's a genius. Wait, you're telling me dude perfect just isn't like magically talented <laughs> that they can uh, sink trick shots from like a mile away? Yeah. You're telling me they don't? They don't always get it right? Well, that's bullshit. I don't know about that. Yeah. Santa anxiety. Children worry about old St. Nick getting COVID-19. Well, too bad. Uh, Dr. Fauci said it's not possible, so tell your kids it's fine. But they are right to worry. Yes. Because as we've talked about, you know, he, he, hits, he, he hits a lot of the check boxes for... Uh, Obesity, old like age. If we were handing out the vaccine today, Santa would be oh, at he's the already front of the line. He, they already gave it to Santa. I do love... And by love, I mean, like, it, it, it affects me uh, deeply on an emotional level, but I enjoy seeing them because I like to feel, is uh, there's a lot of pictures popping up of mall Santas. Behind glass. Alone, behind <laughs> plexiglass, and no one there to see them. Yeah, it's And like the malls are empty. Visiting Santa in prison. Like, <laughs> it is. He's so lonely. Don't I you saw, want to visit Santa? Yeah, I saw a couple of them on Reddit this week, and I was like, this sucks so hard. Yeah. But, like, it, it's, uh, you know. Yeah. It's just something we're all going through. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these Santas are, like, extremely into the job. I they, saw a guy the other day, and he had uh, his license plate was, like, Old St. Nick. And yeah. sure enough, it was a guy with a huge beard, and he had red overalls and shit on driving it. There was, and I wanted uh, to wave at him, but, I like, he, he's old. He's getting a crash or something. Yeah, these guys are retired. They've always, like, it's, like, their favorite time of the year. Because they just happen to, you know, genetically, they look like Sa Santa Claus. So why Clark. not lean so, into it? Uh, yeah, there was a, <laughs> the, the Nathan for you. Uh, Santa yeah. Claus, who like super nice guy, but also just like the random of guns, <laughs> yeah, just a fuckload of guns. Yeah. Uh, God, I, I love that show so much. I don't understand why they don't get on Twitch. 
That would be like very lucrative. A Santa oh, on Twitch. yeah. You pay like a couple bits and Santa yeah. will sit you on Let's, his virtual lap. I think I told you before, but like years ago, well before Twitch, I think before even Justin TV, I think it was on like Stick Cam or something like that. Uh, a guy would dress up every year like the Grinch. And oh, just yeah, yell, yeah. And yell at people. Yeah, that was fucking tight. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. It was great. He was like, it was it was pretty good Grinch making. And he was, he was before his time because he could be really raking it in right now. Yeah. There's probably a Grinch on Cameo, though. Probably. Mm. <laughs> And final headline, Chinese iron crotch kung fu masters fight to preserve a painful looking tradition. I love that this was going around with like various uh, quotes over it. Like, well, like the guy when that, I read this, com- when me, me reading the comment section. The guy they profile in the story is literally named Wang, <laughs> which is like pretty low tier uh, joke about Chinese names. But he's literally named Wang and he's like one of the last dozen people on earth who knows the secret art of like just beating the shit out of your balls Mm -hmm. and being able to take it. And he's this old fucking guy. He's got this log that he swings forward and then he just sits there and braces for when it comes back. He's like, oh, that hurt. But, you know, would hurt a lot more if I didn't have the skills. But they're uh, they're all practicing for when Electric Daisy Carnival comes back. (laughs) There's no thought too strong that can tame my crotch. Yeah. But yeah, it's all everyone who does it is old now. They're trying to they're trying to get the youth into it. Mm -hmm. They're uh, like, hey, hey, you know, you guys think being a TikTok star is cool. You know what's extra cool? Hit yourself in the nuts. <laughs> and, <laughs> and being fine with it. Yeah. Not reacting. Just beating the shit out of your nuts. Mm-hmm. You might be thinking, like, wow, is that going to make me impotent? Why aren't, like, why aren't there more of us? Maybe it's because, I don't know, there's a good chance that a lot of us are sustaining injuries to our groins that make it impossible to procreate. Yeah, that... that. <laughs> It's kind of works be it. against you. Yeah, yeah. Th- there used to be so many of us good at this uh, this whole thing where we just just mangle our nuts. And then slowly over generations, no, no, nobody really ever had any kids though. So you know, how can you carry on the tradition? And then you know, it's a lot easier to pass the tradition on to your son. It's a lot weirder to like go out in the neighborhood and be like, hey. Yeah. I'm a fatherless man looking for some youths to take under my wing. Very awkward having to go down to the local high school during the job fair and set up the old crotch smashing booth. I, Not a lot of uh, attention from the kids. I wonder if in China, like, because in American schools, the, the guys come through and rip up phone books yeah, for the Lord. They just for the Lord. <laughs> in China, it's like the same thing, but it's like <laughs> through the power of uh, Christ, you know, you can handle just getting, getting just railed in the nuts. Don't try this tree. at home or do. Yeah. We need a new generation of crotch bangers yeah anyways that's it for this yeah. week's weekly weird news i hope you enjoyed yourself mm-hmm. um please check out some of our recent videos like the one where we talk about all the fucking shit that disney plus has in their pipeline which it's just a lot stresses me out it raises my blood pressure even just looking at it did watch uh finally started watching mandalorian season two phenomenal the best star wars has ever been yeah that's what i hear i'll get around to it yeah so i'll take more please Yes. All anyway, right. good Bye. day.